one of the chapters is a, uh, a long, uh, one of the longer chapters. It's about the founding fathers and the framers of the Constitution. And we have sort of done a, an edited version of that chapter. And uh, this is uh, a review from the book, a little discussion of the framers and the founders. First, when I talk about the founders, I'm talking about the big six. George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. And before I tell you what I think about them, here's a sample of what they thought of each other. John Adams on Alexander Hamilton. Hamilton had a super abundance of secretions, <laughs> which he could not find women enough to draw off. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin on John Adams. He means well, but sometimes, and in some things, is absolutely out of his senses. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson on George Washington. A curse on his virtues. They've undone his country. John Adams on Benjamin Franklin. The life of Dr. Franklin was a scene of continual dissipation. <laughs> My they must have had a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Once I get these. these uh, Can I help you with them? Who comes next? Oh, I got it. Alexander Hamilton on Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson would soon be revealed as a voluptuary and an intriguing incendiary. <laughs> At least they, the language just flowed. <laughs> Obvious to say, the founders did not merely embody contradiction, but as Christopher Hitchens said about Jefferson, they were they were contradictions. Let me give you some examples. Benjamin Franklin, who preached thrift and chastity, was at the same time a notorious ladies' man and one of the country's largest land speculators. When he died, he owned all of Nova Scotia. George, General George Washington, a slave owner, deployed the first black men to serve in the Continental Army. At the war's end, over 5,000 free African-American soldiers had served in combat under his command. John Adams began his career as a crusading civil rights lawyer, but as president signed laws the jailed journalists who criticized his administration. Mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, who not only owned slaves but bred them for profit, called the institution a moral depravity and a hideous blot on the nation. In 1778, he drafted legislation he hoped would result in slavery's abolition. Alexander Hamilton, the smartest guy in the room, got caught up in a scandal when he was Secretary of the Treasury that almost wrecked his career and marriage. A woman he had been having an affair with turned out to be a prostitute whose husband then blackmailed Hamilton for over two years. James Madison, another slave owner, who once advertised in a local paper for the return of his runaway slaves, gave us our Bill of Rights. In other words, the founders were flawed, inconsistent, and all too human that compared to the feckless lawmakers of today, 
They were indeed like demigods come from Mount Olympus to walk on the earth. Or at least the streets of Philadelphia. Not merely politicians, they were collectively inventors, architects, scientists, linguists, and scholars who had studied Greek and Latin, who read Voltaire, John Stuart Mill, and David Hume. More interestingly, Voltaire, John Stuart Mill, and David Hume read them. They were elegant, eloquent orators and brain writers. They wrote books, political articles, essays, and long philosophical letters to their wives, friends, and to one another. They were men of the Enlightenment, we could use some right now, <laughs> who valued reason over dogma, tolerance over bigotry, and science over faith. And unlike the current right-wing doomsayers and fear mongers, they are all truly apostles of optimism. They were, in fact, the first real Americans. Thank you. Okay.